simulan natin sa ating mga sarili. Ano? Maybe lalong lalo na nitong mga nakaraang uh, vlog ko at live streaming. Sinasabi nila, ano bang uri ng pagkakaisa yan? Bakit mo tinitira ngayon ang mga vlogger na sumusuporta sa ating mahal na Pangulo? Hindi ko sila tinitira to the extent na inaatake ko yung kanilang personality. Hindi po ako ganung tao. Ang sinasabi ko lamang kung bakit ko na mention ang mga pangalang Anthony Taberna, Ira B. Panginiban, Mark Lopez, Malutikia, uh, Thinking Pinoy or RJ Nieto, at iba pa, ay dahil meron din akong nakikita na hindi tama sa kanilang mga pagpuna. At ganun din naman sila na hindi nakikita ang tama sa pagpuna ng ilang po nating mga kababayang Pilipino. At wala pong masama dyan. Kasi yan po ay magre-raise ng awareness sa bawat Pilipino na constructively and friendly magkaroon po tayo ng discussions para sa ikagaganda at ikasasaayos ng ating bansa at ng sambayan ng Pilipino. Unfortunately for some, ang nagiging argumento ay ad hominem o personal attack. Pagka ganoon, hindi iyon po ang hindi na tama. Kailan ko ba sinabi dito na si Thinking Pinoy ay ganito, na si Anthony Taberna ay ganyan, na si Ira B. Panganiban ay ganon, si Malukia ay ganito. Hindi ako nag-atake personally sa kanila. Ang aking pinupuna ay yung mga issues na nire-raise nila. At dapat na pag-uusapan po iyon ng maayos. Kaya ako sa inyo mga tol, iwasan nyo din mag-personal attack sa mga tao na critical sa ating Pangulo. And I do not know kung ano ba ang reason. Bakit hanggang sa kasalukuyan si Lenny Robredo, ha? huwag kayong masasaktan. Ang daming mga tumitira pa rin dito. Kesyo ganito, kesyo ganyan. Alam nyo, ang Pangulo natin, nagahangad ng pagkakaisa. Bagamat hindi sila mapagkakatiwalaan ayon sa ating mga paniniwala, ikip na natin yon sa ating sarili at maging mapagbantay tayo. Hanggat maaari, iwasan po natin yung magti-trigger. Alimbawa, magpo-post ka na ganito si Lenny Robredo, ganito si Malutikia, ganito si Anthony Taberna, ganito si Thinking Pinoy. Kung mag-post man tayo, dapat constructive criticism. Hindi yung sasabihan nyo, in particular ako na, sasabihan ako ng mga panatiko o mga supporter talaga ng mga tao na ito. Kasi parang ganun ang sistema eh. Na ako ay bobo. Meron pa nga nagsalita rito sa akin na magpagupit daw po ako at maligo ako at mag-apply daw po ako sa trabaho. O tingnan nyo yung mga argumentong ganon. Personal, hindi issue ang pinag-uusapan. Kaya para makamit talaga natin ang panawagan ng pagkakaisa, simulan po natin sa ating mga sarili. Hindi yung kaliwat kanan. Titira tayo sa mga hindi po natin kapanalig sa paniniwala sa politika. Hindi po yun tama. At tingin ko, mismong ang Pangulo, kung meron lang pagkakataon na pagsabihan tayo, eh, baka ganun din ang sabihin sa inyo. Of course, uh, of the, that we had depended on during the during pre-pandemic days uh, will cease to exist, have ceased to exist. And we have to identify as quickly as possible and to have a good view and forecast for the future to position the Philippines in such a way that uh, we are able to uh, be part of the transformation of the global economy. Thank you for that. <laughs> Mr. President, you mentioned a couple of times that uh, you're a treaty ally of the United States. So are we Australians. There are five of us in Asia. Sometimes the Americans can be tricky to deal with. <laughs> how's, how's it, how's I, I, I don't think you'll, you, you'll get any contradiction from the Philippines uh, on that. <laughs> but they're good people and uh, they've been reliable security partners. So tell me, uh, in a nutshell, how's it going with Uncle Sam? Because it wasn't going so well under President Duterte. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in a sense, uh, well, it never, in a sense, 
despite the fact that uh, uh, my predecessor, President Duterte, had a, a very different treatment of the uh, relationship between the U.S. and, uh, and the Philippines. Uh, the basic premise of the strong relationship that has been developed between the U.S. and the Philippines over over uh, more than 100 years, uh, beyond the time that we had a formal diplomatic relationship, uh, has, uh, is, is recognized as being as strong as it has ever been, and, and that it is necessary, especially with the events of uh, the past few weeks and months, maybe. Uh, where that what, what has happened is that many times we, I had felt that in the, in the past years, uh, there was a feeling that we had come to a kind of modus vivendi in our region, and that is going to, that we, you know, we have found a way to live with each other in peace, and found a way to uh, calm the waters whenever uh, things go awry a little bit. Uh, but again, the, the the events in the last in the last few months really have pointed out. That those problems had not really gone away they were just bubbling under the surface and they now have come above the surface and we have to we have to face those challenges and we have to deal with them so the united states uh, the partnership between the united states and the philippines is going to be certainly a very very important part of uh, being able to manage uh, those problems that we have been facing uh, I think it is, uh, it's no surprise to anyone that uh, the Philippines uh, uh, has uh, some, of these, uh, some of these conflicts with the People's Republic of China. And uh, the position that the Philippines takes is that we have no territorial conflict with China. What we have are China claiming territory that belongs to the Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> Mabigat yung binitawan na pananalita dyan ng ating Pangulo. Alam na kung ano ang posisyon ng ating Pangulo dito. Ang kanyang paniniwala, ang teritoryo po natin kiniklaim ng China at not the other way around. Ano, na merong territorial claims tayo sa China. Pero siyempre, babalik na naman tayo doon sa principle na pinag-usapan natin kanina, e eh, friend to all and an enemy to none. Kaya makikipag-usap lang tayo definitely sa China. Yung katanungan na ito ng, ng uh, kausap ng ating Pangulo, napaka-komplikado, napaka-hirap po niyan. Na in a nutshell, meaning in a, in a simple point of view or briefly, ipaliwanag ng ating Pangulo kung ano po ba yung stand natin sa Estados Unidos. Dahil alam naman natin mga tol, na nitong nakaraang administrasyon, hindi po good ang term ng ating bansa sa Estados Unidos. Not really, not a good one. Yung, yung, uh, ang ang pinupoint ko lang, baka ma-misinterpret ako dito ng mga manonood po natin, medyo, medyo ano kasi, uh, complicated ang uh, sitwasyon. Dahil nga po, makailang beses na nagpahayag ang ating dating Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte sa Amerika at uh, mas parang nagiging pabor ang pagbibigay po ng konsiderasyon o ng, rela ng maayos na relasyon natin sa bansang China at saka sa Russia. Kaya naman, dito pinapakita lang ng ating Pangulo na ito ang pulisiya ngayon. Hindi po natin kinaiinisan, inaayawan ang Estados Unidos at ang sino mang bansa bagkos lahat po ng mga ito ay dapat po nating itratong kaibigan at kakampi. Ngunit, siyempre, ang issue sa Philippine West o sa West Philippine Sea ay hindi naman may isasang tabi kaya pinagdiinan at pinalakpakan po siya diyan. Pinalakpakan ng ating pangulo na tayo po ang inaagawan ng teritoryo at hindi po ang tayo, hindi po Pilipinas ang nang-aagaw ng teritoryo sa bansang China. Tuloy po natin mga tol. So this is the the position we take, and uh, with our with our American partners, we have uh, we have uh, promoted that uh, that position. We have also made it very clear to our friends in Beijing 
uh, that this is the way we feel about it. And uh, as, a, as a consequence of uh, this uh, challenge that we have, this diplomatic, this territorial challenge that we have, um, I'd like to point out that this is the first national election in the Philippines where foreign policy was an issue with the people. The, generally speaking, in our experience, the foreign policy, uh, the ordinary citizen, the ordinary voter, I would say, well, foreign policy is not really our concern. Uh, let the uh, experts and in government decide that. But when it happens that we that our fishermen are not allowed to continue with their livelihood to fish in areas where they have fished for the last 30, 40 generations, uh, then it becomes an issue right at the gut of our people. And that is where we find ourselves now. I listened carefully to what you said in your remarks about the West Philippine Sea um, and your recent stated position of the government in terms of the permanent court of arbitration decision in uh, 2016. So given China's posture, uh, which is in recent times, usually not through grey coloured vessels, that's warships, but through ships of other colours, sometimes Coast Guard vessels and sometimes fishing fleets, and sometimes fishing fleets comprised of hundreds of vessels very close together. Looking ahead for the next couple of years, what would you ask our Chinese friends to do differently? Well, what we have tried, I mean, it, in, in my view, it is a uh, it is uh, nobody wants to go to war. Uh, the one thing we need to avoid is a shooting war. And I have always said that the fundamental principle that guides our foreign policy is peace. Uh, we talk about the economy. We say that we are in crisis. There are many things that we need to do. We have good plans for it. We have a very optim we, we are very optimistic about the future. But all of these things will be for naught. Uh, if there is uh, conflict uh, in the, uh, if there is conflict in the in the region, uh, Australia is certainly a, a strong partner in uh, all of these uh, actuations that we have been trying to endorse. Uh, I in in um, in the case of the Philippines, it's clear that militarily there is no comparison between the Philippines and China in terms of capability, uh, in terms of. Um, uh, of a, uh, strength, uh, military strength, should it come to that. However, we are, we believe that the strength that we can apply will be from the partnerships, once again, that we have with countries like Australia, with our ASEAN members, with the rest of our, with the rest of our friends and allies in, uh, in the region. And that's why I think that ASEAN is going to have to play a stronger role um, in all of these uh, in all of, in all of these discussions and uh, in trying to again uh, keep the peace and slowly in, but continue to engage China um, because once that engagement stops, then. Uh, there is no progress, and then things uh, could uh, very easily deteriorate, and that is not what we want to happen. Uh, so we have tried, uh, when it, when it, uh, in, on a bilateral basis with China, uh, to although we maintain our our position in terms of our maritime territories and maritime our fishing rights, our um, economic zones, uh, we have nonetheless uh, tried to continue to engage China uh, on those on that basis, on those subjects, but also engage China on other aspects, uh, the people-to-people -people relationships, the uh, uh, even the economic relationships that we have uh, fostered with China, uh, even the uh, some of the some of the other. Uh, exchanges that we have had in terms of education, in terms of in terms of cultural uh, exchanges, in terms of uh, all of the other things. I I have always uh, uh, told my Chinese friends, and I said, let us not make the um, our differences uh, concerning uh, maritime 
uh, the, the baselines, the economic zones, etc. Let us not make that the defining element of our relationship. Because if that is the only defining relation, if that will be the defining relationship of our, the, the defining part of our relationship, then uh, we are really at a standstill. And hopefully if we make progress in other areas, this will help. I always quote that the time, the, the way that the United States, for example, and China came together was through ping pong. If you remember, it was because the uh, Chinese uh, ping pong uh, captain well, played with the United States ping pong captain and they became friends and ping pong went to, China, to the United States. And this led to Richard Nixon going to China and uh, establishing uh, diplomatic relations. So perhaps that's uh, something. So we must explore everything. We must explore every avenue. Uh, we do it G to G, government to government. Basketball. Do we do basketball? Basketball could be <laughs> could be another another. But in in any single way, we never know. You never know uh, where the progress will come. So you have to try everything. You cannot discount uh, anything uh, and uh, uh, limit yourself to uh, just the traditional ways of negotiating the traditional ways of dealing uh, with sort of, with this kind of problem uh we have to be uh, to, to an extent i would say that we have been successful and that we have slowly begun to redefine or rather no not redefine but to add uh to that relationship uh in other aspects of of a diplomat simply stated mga tol hindi po natin kaya militarily ang China. Ang sinasabi po ng ating Pangulo, the military strength capacity ng bansang China ay napakalakas kumpara sa bansang Pilipinas. Wala po tayong ibang options kung hindi ipagpatuloy ang mapayapang pakikipag-usap dito sa bansang China. Kahit sinasabi po natin na tayo ang merong karapatan diyan po sa economic zone, maritime zone na yan, still, hindi po natin pwede itong ipagdiinan sa bansang China sa ibang mga kaparaanan maliban sa pakikipag-usap. Yun po ang pinupunto dito ng ating Pangulo. At ilang beses niya na po itong sinabi. Una ko po itong narinig sa ating Pangulo Noong presidential debate na hineld po diyan po sa Okada, pinangunahan po yan ng SMNI. Tinanong po siya kung anong posisyon niya diyan, particular ni Professor Clarita Carlos, ang ating kasalukuyang National Security Advisor. At nilinaw ng ating Pangulo, katulad ng sinabi natin a while ago, na tatlo ang options. Pero doon sa tatlong options na yon, isa lang ang pwede po nating piliin. Dahil ang gera hindi pa pwede. Eh, lalampasuhin tayo. Dudurugin tayo ng bansang China. Hindi lang siguro masabi yan ng ating Pangulo, pero ako na mismo ang magsasabi na ganun po ang situations. Hindi po natin may kaya militarily ang China. At hindi rin naman pa pwede yung arbitrations dahil hindi nga po kinikilala ng bansang China ang nabanggit na korte. Ayaw po nilang magpasakop sa korte na yan, kaya kahit anong maging desisyon yan, ay hindi po pwede kilalanin sa kanilang paniniwala. Tanging yung ikatlong option lamang, bilateral talks, bilateral agreement ang pwede natin gawin at dapat ipagpatuloy po natin iyan ng wala pong humpay. At pinapakita din po dito ng ating Pangulo at pakikipag-usap niya sa bansang China na hindi pa pwedeng i-define ng, ng uh, conflict na yan ang pakikipagkaibigan o relasyon po natin sa bansang China. Bagkos, maging kaparaanan po ito para mas maging malalim pa ang pag-uusap para mapalago, of course, ang relasyon at uh, interest ng bawat bansa. Tandaan natin mga tol, dito hindi dapat maging self-serving ang action ng ating Pangulo. Napaka-critical ng mga katanungan na ito at kasagutan na binibitawan dito ng ating Pangulo dahil the moment na magsalita po siya, magiging basically 
form part ng polisiya yan ng ating gobyerno. Kaya napakaingat ng kanyang pagsasalita dito. Hindi niya dinidirekta pero ipinapakita niya na ito ang ating posisyon at inuulit-ulit niya that we are friend to all and an enemy to no one. Atik life of political life uh, within the region, and uh, I think that has happened because of again the strong partnerships that we have with the other countries, our allies around the region, and uh, that way that uh, united front that we can present, uh, I think is a very very important aspect of that engagement. In your speech before, you also made positive reference to the Quad and AUKUS. And that follows, I think, from the logic you've just explained about uh, those um, beyond the Philippines uh, on whom you can rely for security policy support. Um, your reflections on how the Quad, for example, uh, aids to strategic stability in the region, uh, that would be of interest, I'm sure, to this audience. And within that, uh, your view and vision of your future relationship with Japan. Well, the uh, Quad certainly is another one of those aggregations that we feel are going to be it's a partnership uh, uh, between countries that uh, I think uh, again uh, by if we were to move as, as a, one country alone um, it would not be as effective as if we approach the problem as part of these uh, political uh, diplomatic aggregation even military aggregations that we have put together uh, so that uh, that's again something that is fundamental to uh, the way we the way we try to approach the problems that we are facing vis-a-vis um, -vis the uh, maritime uh, disputes that we have. Um, uh, I have to remind people that uh, these maritime disputes are not only with China; uh, they, we also have uh, within ASEAN. Uh, some disputes with our other member countries. So, but in my view, this applies as well. Uh, so this this kind this these kinds of, of partnerships I think are are very very important. Now Japan uh, so certainly I had uh, I had a meeting with uh, uh, the Prime Minister Prime Minister Kishida just uh, the other day, and um, naturally I think uh, it's no surprise to anyone that uh, they are terribly terribly concerned, um, not only of China. But we, because of the recent events, we have focused on uh, the Taiwan situation, um, the visit of the United States uh, uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan uh, sort of highlighted once again the simmering tensions that, uh, as I said, were beneath the surface but now have surfaced out into the open. But we, if you remember, if we go back maybe uh, six months, it was North Korea that we were all very worried about. And it is exactly that, uh, that I think that aspect of it that Japan is also worried about because when you have missiles flying over your, your in your skies and into the sea, uh, it's not so very surprising that the Japan will, 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 will uh, be alarmed. And again, uh, that is part of uh, the relationship that we have uh, between, uh, between Ally countries, Japan is an ally. Japan is a friend and a partner in many, many ways, again. And that, again, again, we feel that we should strengthen that and that continue to um, we continue to, to promote uh, that partnership. The difference between, the difference between um, right now, anyway, uh, between the conflicts or the disagreements between China and the rest of uh, the countries around the area, and Korea, is Korea has threatened to use nuclear weapons. And that would be a complete disaster. And that it, there is no way that the, that the Philippines will, uh, will be somehow exempt from uh, that sort of conflict. And it's very interesting to watch what's happening in uh, Russia and Ukraine, and it's very worrisome because if there is a possibility that nuclear weapons suddenly become, even tactical nuclear weapons, not strategic nuclear, but tactical nuclear weapons become part of that equation, then we, are, then we will see the normalization 
of nuclear weapons as uh, and we will be it will, nuclear weapons will become conventional weapons and perhaps that will encourage other nuclear powers to exercise uh, that nuclear option which uh, as we all know uh, is going to be a uh, is, is the it's really end of world scenario uh, so and to, to, take, to take this the point a little further, we have now we are beyond we are beyond the Cold War. Um, we do not I do not subscribe uh, to the spheres of influence like we had uh, during the Cold War. Uh, so that uh, so we we see that the nuclear weapons should not be we should not, we should abandon the idea of nuclear weapons as deterrence. Um, and really work towards bringing down uh, the stockpiles of nuclear weapons or in the world and with of course the 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 ideal result of them being taken away and uh, us not having no one having any nuclear weapons now that's easier said than done that's easier said than done because each country that has nuclear weapons uh, have a different view on the subject and feel that they must have it because uh, uh, they have enemies that they feel that uh, need to be deterred. So that is, uh, I think, where we let, where, where we, where we, if we take it as far, that's as far as we can take the the analysis of the conflict. It's something that uh, uh, it is something that we dream. Speaking of nuclear weapons, ah. Uh... Tinignan ko lang sa Google. Sabi po dito, it is estimated that there are approximately 13,080 nuclear warheads in the world today. Ganoon po karami, mga tol. Kaya dito, pinaliliwanag ng ating Pangulot, napakagaling talaga. Alam na alam ang mga sinasabi. Hindi totoo na walang kaalaman itong ating Pangulo ah. Napakagaling. Dito, pinaliliwanag ng ating Pangulo na dalawa ang perspektibo ng mga bansa supporting or against sa nuclear weapon. Siyempre, sa perspektibo po nila na meron, ito pong mga bansa na kasama po dito sa 13,080 na meron nuclear warheads, eh, kailangan po nila yan para po sa kanilang security. Pero sa mga bansa na katulad po natin na wala naman po tayong nuclear warheads, eh hindi po natin kailangan yan. Eh ngayon, ano ba ang magagawa ng ating bansa? Siyempre, ipromote po natin yung peace. Ipromote po natin yung kapayapaan maayos ng pakikipag-usap sa bawat nation. Dahil kahit sa ang angulo tingnan mga tol, kapag ka nagkaroon ng nuclear war, Hindi man tayo bahagi diyan direkta maaapektuhan po tayo. Huwag po nating ipanalangin na magkaroon ng uh, pagtatalo ang mga bansa na ito partikular sa Russia at saka sa Ukraine dahil may mga issue ngayon na parang natetempt ng gumamit ng nuclear weapon ito pong bansang Russia dito po sa Ukraine. At definitely meron din ang Ukraine yan. Kapag ka nagkaroon ng nuclear war between those countries, lahat po apektado, particular ang bansang Euro, ang ang, uh, ang kontinente ng Europa. At tingin ko, kung mangyayari yun, damay-damay po iyan. Baka may mga makialam ng bansa dyan, katulad po ng North Korea na binanggit ng ating Pangulo na very much concerned siya. Alam nyo ba na ang North Korea ang nagsusupply ngayon, binibilihan ngayon ang mga gamit ng Russia. Tapos ang Ukraine naman, sinong supplyan ng mga West countries, binebentahan po nila ng mga gamit. Huwag nating i ano, ipanalangin ang kanyang mga at kung naniniwala naman ako na wala namang may gusto diyan. I use the, the word na panalangin lamang hypothetically kasi hindi po natin ninanais na magkaroon po ng nuclear circumstances among complex ng bawat bansa. Talong-talo po lahat. Kahit sabihin nilang meron sila, sigurado matatalo pa rin sila. Hindi maaaring hindi maapektuhan ang bawat bansa kapag ka nagkaroon po ng nuclear conflict. It, we, that we pray for 
uh, but the way towards that uh, the way towards that end uh, certainly is not clear as there are so many varied and different uh, views on the subject vis-a-vis uh, -vis the individual the situations of a uh, of, of those countries that do have nuclear stockpiles so this is the thinking that uh, uh, we have um, developed and this is the thinking that we have tried to espouse to our friends and neighbors your comments just now about the legitimization of the use of tactical nuclear weapons i think are extraordinarily important the more of us in the international community are serving political leaders like yourself who make that clear to our friends in moscow the better we cross that threshold, we're into a world of different